Hi, YouTube. Unlike some people, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not reading. Um, I have a couple things I want to go over and show you. Well, I'm not going to show you. I'll read it to you. I'm on um, the internet. But first, um, I, I'm talking about the Revelation 12 sign today and how it happens every year in September. And 2017, um, it happened like, like very close alignment with all the stars, um, like for the fourth time in recorded history. And um, one of them was like, for instance, 70 AD. But like I say in astronomy, you can look it up. It happens every single year. And then another one of the signs um, of the, uh, okay, just a second is, uh, let's see, just a second, I got it here, the sixth plague, the angel dries up the great river, well, the Tigris and the Euphrates River are drying up, these are the very rivers that were once a critical part of the cradle of the civilization in ancient Mesopotamia, Tamia, two 2,000 years before Christ. The decrease in the water primarily has resulted from major drought in 20 or 2007 and the loss of the snowpack in the mountains of the north. And then it, um, another one says, biblically speaking, when the Euphrates River dries up, essentially the line between the righteous and the unrighteous becomes blurred and is no longer present in Timothy 3, 1 through 7. And Isaiah speaks about it in 5, 20. And then it says, we are told in the last days men will become wicked and people will call evil and good and good evil. Then also on the sixth plague, the Euphrates, January 9th, 2020, the Euphrates was literally dried up. Hundreds of years before Christ, the water of the literal Euphrates, okay, just a second, sorry, um, was literally dried up to prepare the way for the literal king from the east, namely for Cyrus and the kings of the Medes and the Persians who came from the east. Revelation 16, 12, therefore uses a literal historical event to symbolize, symbolize future events. And then in May 4th, um, there's a report, the um, 2021, the river Euphrates by divine consention is drying up for the kings of the nations to cross with the aim of exterminating each other and the people, says St. Andrew, as the Lord said in the Gospels, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Matthew 24, 7. Um, Syria's Euphrates River is drying up as the revelation foretold. It's the longest, wait, Euphrates River is Syria's longest river and is drying up and raising concerns as millions of people in Syria are losing access to water, food, and electricity from the demise of the river and can lead to a humanitarian disaster. Um, and then they're talking about the death of the Nile and Daniel 5 drying of the Euphrates, comparing the reference to the river Euphrates and Daniel 5 and the revelation 
15 drying of the Euphrates um, ancient Babylon was situated on the river Euphrates see Jeremiah 51 through 63 and 64 and then let's see what else we got. Iraq suffers as the Euphrates River dwindles. Okay, I'm going to go back a little bit to some of that Revelation 12 stuff. Um, there was a couple things that I saw that were interesting. Let's see. Oh, you know how it says... Um, Okay, just a second. I, I'm looking for when they're speaking about the great whore of Babylon and she's sitting on a beast. Some of it is referring to Babylon being the great whore, not the woman sitting on the beast. And she's holding a cup of their fornications with her. That's indicating um, it is another way of looking at it. If you read it again and think about it, well, is this woman, is the beast bad? Is that Christ or is it Satan? Is she um, the mother of the child she travailed to give birth to? And she's holding a cup of their fornications with her. If this woman was raped, like I keep screaming at people, that's what the situation is. And don't you feel pretty raped nowadays by the government? Yeah. Well, that's, um, okay, wait, just let me find more of it. Um, Okay. There and then they're talking about on February second, two thousand and two. Did the revelation sign already happen? But did it not happen in AD seventy? <clears throat> so what they have to do Let's go to Revelation. Well, we have this man who arises, the Antichrist, 666 is his number. He controls all banking and commerce, and they make an image to him. That image is put in the temple. That image speaks, or it just goes back to chap chapter 6. Um, okay, well, anyway, my point there is the banking si system is already controlled by, um, excuse my, my setup here to, oop, okay, I got it better, is already controlled um, by, it's a beast system. Okay, just one moment. Okay, um, is the war in heaven from Revelation past? Okay, let's see what this one says. This is um, emp.org, November 30th, 2011. We are already saved, delivered from penalty of sin. But we are being saved, delivered from the power of sin, and will be saved in the future, delivered from the presence of sin. Similarly, Satan has already been defeated, thrown out of heaven, and defeated by Christ's anointed resurrection. He is being defeated in the present battle described in Ephesians 6, and he will be defeated in the final battle. Are they taking, are the events of Revelation taking place now? 
I agree with this. This person says, um, pretism is the belief that the events of revelation, especially the great tribulation has already occurred. Um, that's my point in what I'm talking about today. I'll read one more. This one is, um, got questions, war in heaven. April 26, gotquestions.org. Um, the last great angelic battle and Satan's ultimate expulsion from heaven are described in Revelation 12, 7 through 12. Um, 12, 7 through 12, 12. In this passage, John sees a great war between Michael and the angels of God, the dragon, Satan, and his falling angels or demons that will take place in the end times. Satan is his, Satan in his great pride and delusion that he can be like God will lead the final rebellion against God. Well, okay. Here's my thoughts on all this. Um, like I said, consider that, I mean, uh, the great whore is, is a city, not a person. And what beast is she riding? Christ is coming back with a sword. So those are just a couple of things to consider. And my point of this video is that they keep replaying i mean there's pastors out there in churches that just love this stuff they'd like to be able to tell you that the end times haven't happened yet fear 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 and give me more money that's what it's all about they're just a part of the beast system replaying the scriptures that were written two thousand years ago and christ is in the world through us is one man Christ? Perhaps. Is one man the Antichrist? There's many Antichrists. They have an image of him. Go look at the Vatican. We all know that. Um, very interesting landscape in uh, Philadelphia on Robin's Hood channel. He shows um, some very strange things, almost to the point that the architecture is unbelievable. Um, uh, let me go back and see what I can find a little bit more on this. Um, like I say, I believe this has already happened. Um, like how many times, you know? Virgo already has the crown of the 12 stars. Well, one person said this is false. Um, which isn't true because it did happen in 2017. Fully. Okay, here's one. January 2018. The timing of Jupiter and Mars conjunction on January 6, 7, 2018 is amazing. It comes 813 days after the last time this conjuncture occurred in 2015. It occurred in Leo in 2018. It occurs in Libra. Um, well, in 2017, it occurred in Virgo. This was the day none other than the Revelation 12 sign. Um, okay, just a second. This guy says that uh, uh, astrology is uh, not once, but seven times. Then there is a popular... Oh, it, it's an article I'd have to go to. Forget it. It's all right. Um, okay, here's the 2017, which on the 20th, I believe, of September, 
is considered the Feast of Trumpets from what I've gathered till the 20th, 20th to the 22nd. Well, this one says, the Revelation 12 prophecy is a apocalyptic belief that the astronomical alignment on September 23rd, 2017 fulfilled the last two verses of Revelation 12. The date conceded that the autumn equinox, the end of the Catholic September ember days, this theory promoted by some Christians and Christian news organization proposed that the literal fulfillment of the prophecy um, was made. So, um, okay, wait. How many times has it happened? Okay. Oh, you know how it says, um, I, I heard a very good point, and this is true, about how they say the bowls of wrath. Or like in the King James, it says the vials, um, like the plagues, a bowl of a plague. How many times, like if you walked in a room and there was plagues in a bowl, or like usually in a lab, there would be a plague, like the ones I found, the vials, they're in a vial. So the words actually kind of do, bowl indicates open. Um, but the vials have yet to be open. Maybe, maybe that's where they, they take the translation. I don't know. Okay, wait. The following are a list of the sign of the times, which suggest we are in the season when we should be expecting Jesus to return soon. Okay. Um, okay, this one says that the sign is coming September 23rd, 2017, and not ever again for a hundred years. The seals of Revelation have been opened. But if God wanted to hide this knowledge completely, he never would have hid it in the first place. He meant for those seals to be open. In fact, God intended this important prophetic book to be understood in our times today. Other scriptures reveal that the answer, the last era of God's church before Christ returns, describes in Revelation 3, 14 through 22, Christ chastens it for being lukewarm and spiritually wretched. So, let's see. The Bible indicates Revelation, the seven trumpets will sound before the end of the age and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Five of seven have already sounded as is evidenced by the critical moments in recent history. The Third World War, which is trigger, the triggering event of the Sixth Trumpet, may have already begun. Oh, yeah, think every government in the world against their own people? I, I would call that war. Yeah, that's war. Sorry, I don't mean to be a smart ass like that. You think, yeah, that was rude. Pardon me. <laughs> For real. It's just irritating because I know they keep using the scriptures over and over and over. And that's, you know, they love it. They really do. Anyway, let's see what else I can find. You know, these are just people's opinions. 
none of us can actually prove any of this. Oh, here's one interesting thing. In Syria, the mountains where the Euphrates flows out of is called the Taurus River, which I thought was kind of a little odd. I call Doug Satan, and um, he's a uh, Aries Taurus cusp born on Hitler's birthday for 2050. Well, Hitler wasn't born in 50, but I just think, you know, his Taurus part, just kind of funny there. Um, let's see. There's so many coincidences with him. That's not really funny at all. So if six of the the um, trumpets have sounded, I'm just saying if, well, the, wouldn't the seventh one literally be the last plague? Um, let's see now this in, uh, October 1874, the Black Death spreading across Europe was interpreted by many as the sign of the end times. In 1368 through 1370, John de Roquelentalia, French, I believe, um, wrote that Revelation 12.14 referred to 10.58 to 18.36 when Christ should come 28th of April 1843 the 31st of December 1843 whatever that means it's kind of vague is it already in progress is it beginning dating from october 1874 to 1915. okay just a second it's kind of i mean everybody's speculating like i say yeah you can read into the scriptures and you can uh, um, read it word for word and actually go deep into the base languages. And pre-Hebrew is um, Aramaic. It's not strictly Hebrew or Greek. So um, some people don't go deep enough. Um, well, we are in the time where many are coming forward and saying they're Jesus Christ. That's a fact. And I don't think, you know, unless they're trying to deceive people, I don't think that's entirely a horrible thing. You know. Who are the 24 elders? Just a second, still reading. And some of these believe that everything's past. Most fulfillments having occurred 70 AD. The millennium is not literal, but instead the millennium describes the success of Christianity over centuries, eventually bringing in a utopia. Well, I'll leave it at that. I kind of thought that was interesting, and I just thought I'd kind of open it up for your interpretation, too. You know, what do you think? Uh, do you feel like uh, people in the world are ready to bring in some type of utopia? 
because frankly um the the deceiving and the pain and degradation that's going on all the way around the world doesn't scream utopic to me and if i were trying to build a family and live as god meant me to be the way society is and the culture and what they deem acceptable and what christians know they don't want around their families that doesn't scream utopia either so um i'll leave it at that i just wanted to bring some of that to your attention that it does happen every year in september sometimes the stars are more more closely aligned like they were let me see was that four years ago 20 18 19 20 21 yeah four years ago so yes i used my fingers i am i'm like um this is literally we had one break now the sun's shining today but we had like a a rainy night and i really suffer <clears throat> days like that is really painful so okay everybody thank you for joining me i might be back i'm not sure I just wanted to bring that to your attention that the wording in the scriptures, um, well, first, number one, Mary wasn't a whore. Babylon is not a physical person. And the fornication is the people that are scummy like that. And if people can't control themselves, don't put everybody in your basket. Not everybody's like that. Some people have uh, uh, been wide awake maybe all their lives. So just, um, it's not that we don't do anything wrong or any, but we're not, um, we know the difference between right and wrong. And we act accordingly. So we'll just put it there. And that doesn't mean that I would never speak to anybody. If they have done things wrong in their life, no problem. But there's some people that truly have evil intent. And that's, we'll just take it from there. If they, yeah, I, I, I can't say anymore. I, I don't believe a leopard changes their spots. I think if you're born with a conscience and you do crappy things, you fix it. If you're not, well, then you're not. And you're not of that bloodline. And the two don't, don't merge. It's the separation. So that's, that's my outlook. And as you can fully see in society today, there's people that strongly feel one way and strongly feel another way and you know they say don't pick a side well that's some lukewarm crap right there pick your poison whatever if i'm taking my chances with god i'm telling him i'm, I'm going by what he tells me in my heart and what the commandments say that doesn't mean that people doing wrong don't have a chance of course they do that just means that there's ones that don't take that chance because they do not care. And those are the ones that are going to be let go. It's as simple as that. That's really simple. Fighting for a demon is ludicrous. If the demon doesn't want to be a demon, they wouldn't have picked that road. So, I don't know. This is, you know, I guess some people haven't been smacked in their head enough by these demons to realize that they're a danger to the whole world. But that's that's what we're going to stop. That's what we're here stopping right now. So peace, everybody, and love.